All right, in uh, this module, we're going to start a new chapter on diffusion. And so in this module in particular, uh, I'm going to kind of give you an introduction to diffusion in ceramics. OK, so when we talk about diffusion, we're talking about atomic motion of atoms, ions, or molecules. Right? So that's uh, kind of the, the basics of, of what we're looking at. And since we're talking about ceramics, a lot of times we're going to be talking about ions. So if you're wondering why we're talking about diffusion, diffusion is going to be important for a number of topics um, in this class and also just in general. Right, The diffusion or the movement of atoms is extremely important for a process known as sintering, which we're going to talk about in ceram for ceramics, um, also for oxidation um, and uh, tempering processes, uh, precipitation hardening, and also uh, doping of semiconductors. So it's got a host of kind of applications in, in why we care about it. So let's look at the types of diffusion uh, that there are and, and what they look like in, uh, in materials. So here's the kind of types of diffusion that we can have. Uh, so the first one here, um, as you can see, there's there's an empty site, which we call a vacancy, and an atom or ion or molecule moves uh, from its position to a vacancy, right? So this is known as vacancy diffusion. We can also have things in the interstitials between uh, normally or regular sites that move between interstitials. And so these are known as interstitial or interstitial diffusion. Um, we can also have uh, another case here where, uh, you know, this was a kind of a, a foreign material, uh, an external dopant. Uh, whereas here, this is an interstitial, but it's a, what we call a self interstitial. So it's the same material. It just happens to be in the interstitial. And so it hops between interstitial sites. Um, and so that's another type is self interstitial. Uh, but the key thing about all of these mechanisms is let's take a look at this atom up here for vacancy diffusion. To go from its site to the vacancy, it has to pass through kind of a narrow channel uh, where the two other atoms or more are located, right? So it kind of has to squeeze through that area. And to do that requires. Um, energy and more force to, to move those apart. Same thing here, to go from one interstitial to the other, even though the interstitial atoms are relatively small, uh, they're, they still tend to be larger than the site. And so to move from this interstitial to the next requires squeezing through kind of this passageway or tunnel, um, and that requires energy. And the same thing with obviously self interstitials. Um, and so that energy that it overcomes uh, is kind of illustrated by this plot here. So this is the enthalpy of migration. So it's the difference in enthalpy of migration. Uh, and then we have the star term there. And so it's in its kind of resting site at the inner, uh, the minimum of energy. And to go right here at the, the, the middle of these atoms is the highest amount of energy that it has to achieve. And that's the enthalpy or energy of migration. It's the energy barrier to this process. So this is what we have to supply through um, whatever means, uh, thermal energy or otherwise, to have this uh, interstitial go from this site to this site. And so again, that's known as the energy barrier or the energy of migration, which is why it's given an enthalpy. And then the M is for migration. And so that's what we kind of see here, is that it has to squeeze through that narrow passage, um, and that is known as the energy of migration. Uh, one last consideration uh, with diffusion here. And so when we talk about diffusion, uh, to ha we can have random motion, right? Uh, atoms tend to move around, but in a random fashion. Um, if there's a, um, uh, is, if there's a, um, an overall uh, movement or concentration, right, then um, atoms or ions or vacancies tend to move uh, in a particular region, particularly down the concentration gradient. Uh, and so concentration gradient kind of drives diffusion in a certain direction, 
However, uh, there can also be other things that drive diffusion. Um, again, we're talking about ions here, if we're talking about ionic ceramics. And so uh, an electronic um, gradient, uh, such as current, right, that can cause um, uh, a driving force for ions to move in one direction since they are either negative or positively charged. So uh, an electronic potential can drive um, diffusion. Same thing, um, you know, just because of that, and magnetic could have the same uh, effect as well. So there's other influences here um, in terms of diffusion if we're specifically looking at ions that we all also have to add on to to talk about diffusion uh, in ceramics.